Hey, what's going on? It is your boy Jay Bailey here, and I'm back with yet another video. And um, it's been a while, <laughs> right? Uh, it's been a few months. Um, I apologize for being absent for so long, but I'm, I'm back. And I'm really happy to be back. I'm, I'm excited. If you can't tell, I'm trying to contain myself because I'm telling you I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit too hyped right now. But let me let me calm down for a minute. Um, before I get into actual challenge for today, this is going to be a really easy one. I want to show you what I've been working on for the last few months. Um, let's go ahead and scroll up. So we have I've created a blog here. Um, so if you want, you can go actually go and check it out right now. This is live right now. Um, see this this one here is pretty short. It's a four minute read. Um, they aren't all that short. Uh, some are quite long and were very annoying to write. So I'd appreciate <laughs> if you go ahead and take a look at them. Um, but yeah, so if you prefer to read, because you know I, I, I tend to talk quite a bit, um, so if you prefer to read at your own pace, um, go ahead and look at the, uh, lol, <laughs> go ahead and look at the uh, the, the blog there. Um, I also have a link to the actual VMs that I'm using, so if you click on that, um, it'll just take you take to this other blog that I have here, and it just says, hey, this is, these are the VMs, um, these are some SHA, uh, what they call SHA sums here, digests or whatever. Um, so I, I provide the OVF and the VMDK files in there. Um, so you can, I think you can just double click on the OVF, but if, if for some reason it doesn't work, I have instructions for how you can use the VMDK to import it into your virtualizer, whether that's VirtualBox or VMware. Um, those are the only two that I know of, well, that I use. Um, so yeah, go ahead and take a look at that. So these are just the files here. So if you go, where is it? This link here will take you to these VMs here, so we have our Kelly and we have our Windows VMs there. Um, the passwords, I believe, should be in the in this actual blog, which actually, did I put it all the way down at the bottom? That was silly of me. Um, I think I put the passwords at the bottom here. Yeah, I did, so I'll go ahead and change that, so that's my bad. Anyways, all the all the challenges I did in the past have blog posts, so you can go ahead and take a look at those. Um, I'm really excited about it. I like, I like the way it turned out. The grammar and the writing is Eh, but I, I think I think it's pretty good overall. Hey, what's going on? This is Future Jay Bailey here. Um, I actually forgot to tell you that the link for the blog is in the video description below. So if you want to check it out, you check go to the video description and it's in there. Otherwise, it's jbailey216.com. That's J A Y Bailey216.com. Um, go ahead and check it out. I really appreciate it. Um, in any case, enjoy the rest of the video. Let's go ahead and get started with this challenge here. So we have Chili Willy's race cars. Um, this is going to be a pretty simple challenge as you can see. And not much information in terms of the, um, you know, giving us a hint on what to do or what not to do. So let's just go ahead and get started here. Um, we're going to look at this binary. So we're going to have a file on there. And let's see, with 64-bit binary, dynamically linked. Um, we have debug symbols. Pretty good, pretty good. So that means when we look at this in Ida Pro, we'll be able to see variable names and things of that nature. Just the main function here. Uh, no other functions or other variables that are like global or initialized. So we don't have to worry about that in this challenge. Let's go ahead and look at the strings. Let's see, let's see. Um, let's see, let's keep scrolling up here. All right, here's something that looks interesting. So this is probably gonna be our success message, and this is probably gonna be some type of error messages. Give me what I want, what I really, really want. Say, give me what I want, what I, all right. <laughs> okay, let me calm down. Let me calm. It's been stuck in my head for a while, so I wanna get it stuck in your head as well. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be tortured in this alone. Somebody gotta join me. Give me what I want, what I really, really want. Let's go ahead and open this up in Ida Pro. I guess I had a free, right? I'm not paying for this. All right, hit OK. New. And race cars. Open that up. And while that's, I think it's going to ask me a few more things. Yes. All right. And then. Space bar. Still haven't set it to where it opens up in the text view automatically. I forgot to do that, but that's okay. And shout out to my boy Doral. He operates his own YouTube channel. He put me on to this um, Sublime text editor, which is a lot cleaner and neater than the one that I've been using for a while to G edit. So shout out to him for that. Thank you. This one was very, very nice. 
All right, so let's go ahead and look what we have here. So, like I said, this is a binary that has debug symbols. So we see arc C, arc V already. Um, the author here is taking arc V sub zero because we're not, we're not, you don't, we don't see any like offsets that they're doing. Like we usually see like they add a certain offset to um, like a variable like this to get it to like arc V sub one or sub two or whatever. In this case, they're just taking arc V sub zero and putting that to Sterling. And the results of that get stored into EAX and that gets subtracted by one and then stored into this end variable. So all of that just equates to something like this, zero minus one. And then we take that and store that into the start variable. So just start equals to end. And then we see that we're going to do this unconditional jump here and to hex, if I can scroll, all right, so let's see what's going on here. So again, we're gonna take arc V sub zero, put that into RAX, so I'm just gonna arc V sub zero and RAX. And then we're gonna put start into EDX register here, and then we're gonna subtract one from that. So essentially, we're gonna have RDX equal to um, start minus one there. And then we see that now we see we're gonna actually index arc V sub zero by RDX, which is start minus one. So what that looks like is gonna be arc V sub zero sub start minus one. All right, so this right here is, pre is pretty much the arc V sub zero or the, the RAX there, right? And then we're gonna add it to RDX, which is this here. So we're gonna actually index on that start minus one there. And then we're gonna compare the result of that with hex to F, which is the slash character. And if it's not equal to slash, we're gonna jump up here. So pretty much just taking the name of the binary or the you know the first argument which is dot slash race cars which is how, how, we, how we would run the binary and it's going to check every single character to see if it's equal to um, a slash character and it starts from the very end it's going to work its way back um, so what we can do here is create this while loop and while it's not equal to hex 2f we're going to say start minus minus just like that and that's that's all it's doing there. Um, it's just gonna take, you know, like I said, it's gonna subtract one every time that we don't hit that slash character. All right, so let's go ahead and after we hit the slash character, we're gonna jump to location 11E8, and let's see what happens. So they're gonna compare start with end here, right? So we load start to EAX and compare start with end, and if it's less than end, we're gonna jump up here. So while start is less than end which at this point it should be less than end because well we subtracted start by x amount of things All right so then we're going to jump up here and we're going to put um arc v sub zero into there right and then we're going to get so rdx so it looks like it's going to hold arc v sub zero and then we're going to put start into eax so ax equals to start and then again, we're just gonna index that and store that into e e R EDX. So EDX is gonna be pretty much arc V, if I can spell. Now see, I still can't type. <laughs> just like that, all right? And then the same thing's gonna happen here on these lines right here. So that's gonna come out to be uh, RAX is gonna be arc V sub zero, this time sub N there, all right? And then we compare AL and DL. So that's just going to be the lower eight bytes, I believe, of the EAX and um, this should be, yeah, this should be EAX here. Of the EAX and the EDX registers, so they're going to the lower eight bytes of it, eight, eight bits of it, bytes, bits. <laughs> I get confused sometimes. And so, anyways, we, we take those and we compare them to it together. And if they're equal to each other, then we're going to jump here and subtract one from end and add one to start. So since we're going to be looking at the, the the last character and the first character of the names, and we're going to be working our way inside, um, and you might already be able to tell what's going on here. If they're not equal to each other, and we print out the "Give me what I want, what I really, really want," so, give me what, all right. <laughs> I'm telling you, if it, it's stuck in my head, it's going to get stuck in yours. So that's <laughs> so I apologize about that. Anyways, if they're not equal to each other, like that, and then we're going to say printf. Exit. I spelled printf wrong, didn't I? 
See, something never changed, right? I, I never could spell back in the day when I was doing this. I'm like, saying back in the day as if it was years ago. I never could spell and I still can't spell. And then we're going to do n minus minus and start plus plus. And then at the end, we're just printf. Um, All right, and that's that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and get rid of the, oops. Let's go ahead and get rid of the assembly here. And so that's pretty much it here, right? I mean, pretty self-explanatory if you ask me. Um, so all, all it's doing is just checking to see whether or not the binary name is spelled the same forwards and backwards. So to solve this, all we have to do is read in the binary, right? So right now it's race cars with an S and race cars backwards and not race, you know, it isn't, it's not a palindrome. <laughs> it's like, I, I can't pronounce what that is, but it's not forwards and backwards. So if we were to rename this guy to race car, bam. And we can even do something cute, right? And that's it. So pretty simple challenge here. Um, the debug symbol definitely helped quite a bit, um, but, uh, Yes, all we, we we just figured out that the binary just wants itself to be a palindrome, and that's that's pretty much it. There's no input or to give it. We just change the name of the binary, and that's it. Um, so, like I said, pretty simple challenge. Um, if you like this video, if you learned something new, go ahead and give me a like. I really appreciate that. Um, and while I'm saying that it's a pretty simple challenge, I understand that everybody is at a different level. So, if this was not easy to you, if you're saying, "Jay, hey, this is not easy to me. Like, stop insulting me." Don't mean it as an insult. If, if there's something you didn't understand, go ahead and hit me up in the comment section below. I'm pretty responsive with those things. Um, yeah, <laughs> just hit me up in the comments below. I'm telling like, no questions here are are, are unwelcome. Um, if you like this video, you want to see more of this type of content, do not forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon so you're notified when new videos go live. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.